the Geekcraft How to Play of Realm of Heroes by Mr. B Games. This is the board set up after randomization. You shuffle 32 fields, 4 mountains, and 4 forests in a bag, and lay them out into a 6x6 six six grid. In this map, you can see that there are 3 mountains and 4 forests. This game will be played with 2 players, with blue and green as active players, and yellow and red as inactive players. In this 2 player game, you will use four, all four colors of markers, but remove one random unused color marker for each mountain tile on the map before placing faction markers. So in our case, we only have seven red t markers instead of nine, and we have eight yellow markers instead of nine. We have the full complement of nine for both blue and green. For this two-player game, we've also randomly determined the location of two plague counters, here and here. The first player to place will be blue, as they have the smallest, largest domain. A domain is made up of orthogonal adjacent tiles. Blue will place his leader and his tower into areas that he controls. In this example, the leader can go here, and the tower can go here. If the blue player loses his leader, he's out of the game. Green would then place their leader, likely here, and their tower here. There are four phases to each turn. Plague, Support, Reinforcement, and Movement. So first we'll start with the Plague phase. Any blue tiles that have a Plague counter on them will infect the tiles around them. Blue doesn't have any, so this phase is skipped. Blue will then check the support of their characters. As they only have a leader, there is no need to check this in the first turn. Blue then gets to use the Reinforcement, and in this case we'll summon a Peasant to that tile. Blue will then take their movement phase, using their units to increase the size of their domain. For example, they can use their leader to take over this spot from the red area, removing the red token and replacing it with the blue one, and using their peasant to take over this area, removing it from the yellow control, and again adding a blue token. This concludes the blue player step. Even though the red player isn't active, the plague will still spread on their turn. As there is one area that has plague in the red domain, all of the areas around it will get plague on the red player's turn. Green will now go through the four phases of their turn. We'll start with the plague phase. As we can see, this green tile has a plague counter in it, so it will infect the two areas that are uninhabited beside it. So this yellow one, and this yellow one. It does not infect the mountain, as there can be nothing there, and it does not infect where this tower is, as it is already inhabited. Green will now go through the support phase, and as they have no characters other than their leader, there is no need to worry about this. Green will now go through the reinforcement phase, adding a peasant to the board. Green now goes through the movement phase, increasing the area of their domain. So for example, using this leader to take over this red area, and replace it with a green counter, and using this peasant to take over this blue area, and replace it with a counter. We now go to the inactive yellow player's turn, and all of the areas that yellow has that have plague are also infected, which means it spreads to here, here, there, here, and here. As you can see, the plague can quickly grow out of control, especially in a two-player game. Blue will now start his second turn with the plague phase, where the plague spreads to other areas. In this example, the plague will spread to here, as well as here, and to here. Now Blue moves on to the support phase. During the support phase, all heroes with a box around the strength number on their counter must be supported by the territory they occupy. For example, this peasant requires two areas in order to support it. Blue's domain stretches across these five tiles, so the two required to support this peasant is taken care of. Now Blue moves on to the reinforcement phase, in this case adding another peasant to the board. Blue then moves on to movement, increasing the area of their territory, using the leader to take over this spot. using a peasant 
take over this spot with the plague. And this peasant to take over this spot with the plague. Removing both this yellow and green tile and replacing them with blue. It's now Red's turn again, so we'll add Plague to the board around where the red tiles are, which is here and here. This red tile does not spread Plague because these two sides already have Plague and these two tiles are already occupied. Now it's the beginning of Green's turn. We will spread Plague again. Green then checks the support. This peasant requires two tiles to support it, and the green tiles with plague do not actively count towards that number. Luckily, green does have these two spots that do produce support for that peasant. The forests do not produce support for the peasant either, but can be useful because characters moving through the forest must stop there when they move there. Now it's time for green support phase. They're going to add another peasant to the board here and try and fight back some of the plague with their pieces. They want to keep their leader safe, so the leader's going to move down to here and take over this area. This peasant is going to move here simply to remove the plague and hopefully hold it off. This peasant would like to come over here and take over this area, but this peasant is defending it as a character or building protects all adjacent tiles. So in order to take over this area, the character would need to have a score higher than the peasant's two. As the peasant is obviously only a two, it can't take that area over. However, the peasant can come up and take over this blue area. Now it's time for the yellow player's turn and for them to spread the plague. Luckily, only this spot on the entire board needs to be spread to. Now it's Blue's turn, and we'll go through the same four phases as before. First, we spread Plague, which spreads to here. Now we check for support. The Blue player has two Peasants, which require a total of four support units. Blue, in this domain, has one, two, three, and four. Luckily, this is just enough for the blue player to get to keep both of those peasants. The blue player will now, instead of adding another peasant to the board, replace the peasant and upgrade it to a warrior with a score of 4. Characters that have a higher requirement are harder to keep in the long run, but can be used to take over areas that are defended by other players. Now blue will use their leader to fight back the plague in this area. The peasant to take over this area and fight back the plague and use their warrior to go in and kill the peasant and replace that area with blue. The warrior is able to do this because the green peasant only had a strength of two where the warrior has a strength of four. Players will continue adding plague to the board, supporting their units, reinforcing their units, and moving their units around to take over the area. The last player standing wins the game. There are several trees that the players can use to develop their characters. Players will start with peasants, but those peasants can become warriors, which cost four, and those warriors can later become knights, which cost eight, or rangers that cost six. The benefit of a knight is it is the strongest unit in the game, but unfortunately it requires eight areas on the board to support it every turn. The ranger is useful because it can move through mountains and move through forest locations that are controlled by the player, making it very useful for attacking the other player's leaders. A peasant can also become an apprentice, which allows a player to not only take over the area of one tile from another player, but also take over an adjacent tile as well. The apprentice can be upgraded into a wizard who can take over all adjacent areas into a player's color. Or a sorcerer who ignores the strength of buildings and can take over areas much quicker. It didn't happen in the, in the example game, 
but towers can also be upgraded to castles with a strength of 6, making them much harder to take down, or wizard keeps, which have a strength only of 4, but instead of influencing only one space away, influence up to two spaces away. Wizard's Keeps can be very helpful in protecting your area. The Realm of Heroes Kickstarter is now live. Check out the link below, and thanks for watching.